Hey everyone, so I just updated or I just uploaded the first video uh, from this two part video for the finite difference approximations using a general Taylor series formulation where it's your own stencil, uh, which means you choose the points, you choose the order of the derivative, you choose the order of accuracy that you want. So this is the example that I'm going to go through. I decided to go through the most basic example because uh, it's easy to see how it works and you'll be able to compare it to the other video I posted, which I'll put in the comments section, um, which is the first order forward, so first order derivative, first order accurate, first order accurate, forward finite difference. Um, so up here in the top above the blue line, I just rewrote the equation that was on the bottom of the previous video, which is also posted in the comments, or I'll post in the comments, not comments, the description. Um, okay, so. That you should be familiar with, and then over here is the summation condition that I explained previously as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the derivation for the first order forward difference, first order accuracy, um, and we can see that we should end up with the same result that we got from uh, from just using the Taylor series, the easier way. I mean, it's, that was the easier way. The other method is the easier way for this, but once you get into higher order derivatives and more points, it's this way is a lot easier to use. Um, okay, so... What we want to do in the first order forward difference is we're going to be using points nodes i and i plus 1. Um, and so that, that's why it's forward, because we're using i and then the 1 that's in front of it, which is i plus 1. So that means that, um, if you remember from the, from the Taylor series expansion, we have the u i plus p, which means that the u i is going to be at p is equal to 0. u i plus 1 is at p is equal to 1. So we're using p is equal to 0 and p is equal to 1. So what that means is um, we're setting, so remember the subscripts here I, on my alphas, again, it's small because I tried to fit everything in, but I hope you can see it if you enlarge the screen. Um, the subscripts on the alpha term are the p values. So since we're not using nodes i minus 2, i minus 1, or i plus 2, those uh, coefficients are all going to be are all going to be zero because they won't appear in the finite difference equation. So we're going to set alpha minus two, alpha minus one, and alpha sub two. They're all going to be zero. Um, so what we're trying to solve for now is alpha. I think I said alpha before. Alpha sub one, and then alpha sub zero. So those are the two values that we need to solve for uh, to get this finite difference uh, approximation. So we're looking for the first order forward difference. So the first order derivative is du dx. So we're going to set the coefficient from du dx. This is going to be 1, like I talked about in the last video. The, uh, and then so the, the second order derivative, third and fourth order derivative, those coefficients are all going to be 0. It turns out you don't need those ones for this method, but I'll explain, once I'm done with this, I'll explain why you would need those equations for higher order methods or more points. Um, okay, so again, like I said, the alpha sub minus 2, alpha sub minus 1, alpha sub 2 are all equal to 0. So if we use the summation condition, which is, you can see here, uh, we're going to have from P1 is negative 2 to P2 is 2. We're going to have alpha sub minus 2 plus alpha sub minus 1 plus alpha 0 plus alpha 1 plus alpha, alpha 2 is equal to 0. Uh, since we already said that all these three are equal to 0, what we can do is, you know, this is 0, this is 0, we're using alpha sub 0, we're using alpha sub 1, we're not using alpha sub 2. So what we have is alpha 0 plus alpha 1 is equal to 0. Um, okay, so now we're going to use the coefficient, this piece of information here, so it's kind of color-coded. Uh, the du dx is equal to 1, so we're going to use this coefficient here of the first order derivative term, which we're solving for. We're going to set that coefficient equal to 1. So setting that coefficient equal to 1, we have the negative 2 alpha minus 2, negative alpha minus 1 plus alpha 1 plus 2 alpha 2 is equal to 1. And that's what I've written here. I added the plus alpha 0 in there because it's, I didn't incorporate it up here, but, you know, we need it in here. Um, so, again, we have alpha sub negative 2 is equal to 0 here. Alpha sub negative 1 is equal to 0. Um, this is just 0 because the coefficient in front of it is 0. Uh, I just wanted to put it in there to show you. Uh, and then the alpha 2 is going to be 0. So what we end up having is just alpha 1 is equal to 1, and that's what I've shown here. So what happens is if you combine the two, so you've already solved for alpha 1, so you know that coefficient. So alpha 1 is equal to 1, you plug that into here, and that means alpha 0 is equal to negative 1. So 
what we want to do now is that we have the two coefficients, we can plug it, we can plug them back up into here. Um, and then we'll solve for our final finite difference equation. So we'll plug it into here first. So the first term, it's still a summation from P1 to P2. When we pick P1 is negative 2, P2 is 2. So we're still summing over everything, but we don't need to worry about the negative 2, negative 1, or 2 terms because when we multiply by alpha, it's going to be 0. So I'm just going to look at, so the first term that I'm going to look at is for uh, alpha sub 0. So we have alpha sub 0 and alpha sub 1. So I'm going to do alpha 0 first. So we have alpha 0 times ui plus 0 because p is 0. So we actually have alpha p, or alpha 0, u of i. Alpha 0 is negative 1, so we have negative 1 u of i. So the next one, so we're still summing, so we need to do plus summation. And the next one's going to be alpha 1, so we'll have alpha 1 ui plus 1 because p is equal to 1 now. So since our alpha 1 is 1, we have plus 1 ui plus 1. So that takes care of this term. Now we're going to go to the next side, or the other side. Um, so we have the summation again. We don't need to worry about the negative 2, negative 1, or 2 terms because they're all 0. So we start at the alpha 0. Alpha 0, ui. Alpha 0 is negative 1, so we have negative 1, ui. The next term is alpha 1, so we're going to add the alpha 1, ui. And there's no p in this, so you can see that they end up canceling out because you have a negative 1, ui, and then from your, one, your alpha 1 term, you have plus 1, ui. So these two cancel out. Now we're going to go to this next one here for the first order derivative. So we're again do the summation. Um, and uh, I don't know why I have the summation there to tell you the truth. Because that is the summation there. So that was, okay, there's an addition sign there. My, my bad on that one. So this takes care of the summation. So what we do is we plug in the value that we have. So we know that the alpha 2 or alpha minus 2 is 0, the minus 1 is 0, the 2 is 0, we already know the alpha 0 is 0, so that just leaves alpha 1. We know alpha 1 is 1, so we plug that in there and we get delta x times 1 times du dx. So that's this term here, delta x times 1 times du dx, evaluated at i. And now if we go to the second order derivative, it's already been expanded out from the summation, so we have the 4 alpha minus 2 is going to be 0, the alpha minus 1 is going to be 0, the alpha 2 is going to be 0, so we have alpha 1. So we have delta x squared over 2 times 1, from here, times 1 d squared u dx squared at i, and that's what I've written here, plus the higher order terms, you don't need to worry about them. So if we rearrange, you can see I put it in the form of the, the other video that I had, the normal form that you see it. So we have the ui plus 1, that's this term minus ui, that's this term. I divided both sides by delta x, so we have over delta x, so that's gonna be equal to, since we got rid of these two terms, it's gonna be equal to du dx at point i, plus I divided through by the delta x, so we only have a single delta x over two d squared u dx squared plus some higher order terms. So you can see that this, if you can see it, I hope you can see it, this is the, this is the first order First order forward difference, first order accurate um, finite difference equation. And the truncation here, you can see that this is plus order delta x from this term here. So anything behind from this term and on, that's the truncation error. Uh, and it's the same as our first order finite difference equation that we derived in the other video. So in this one, we didn't need to use the, the other equations here, but I'm just going to give you a I'm not actually going to do the problem, but I'll just show you what it ends up being. Um, if we were using these, so remember we had the, we wanted five equations, so we have five unknowns. We have alpha negative two, alpha negative one, alpha zero, alpha one, and alpha two. So we have five unknowns, we need five equations. So we have the four equations from the derivatives, and then we also have the summation condition. So what that ends up being, if I write the summation condition first, now I'm going to write it in matrix form, and I'm assuming you're all well versed in uh, matrix math. Um, at least to a basic level. So if I write it in matrix form, the summation condition is going to give me, they're all going to be 1. So, I, so you're going to have uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And over here, we're going to have alpha negative 2, alpha negative 1, 
alpha 0, alpha 1, alpha 2. And then we're going to have our, our equaling matrix here, and that's going to be the summation condition is equal to 1, right? Now our next equation that we're going to put in is the du dx is equal to 1. So we're going to use a coefficient from up here, so we're going to have negative 2, and that's negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and that's going to equal 1. So we're going to put a 1 there. Now we're going to use the next equation, the squared, and that's 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. That's equal to 0, so we put a 0 here. The next one's going to be negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8. That's equal to 0 from that equation. And then the last equation gives you 16, 1, 0, 1, 16. And that's also equal to 0. So now all you need to do is solve this matrix, and you'll get all the values, plug them back in. Um, if you choose to look at a second order derivative, all you have to do is simply change this to a 0, change that to a 1, change this to a 0, change that to a 1, and there you go. Um, so that's the way that you can make your own stencil. You can use more points. Uh, you can, it's a little harder to specify your accuracy and solve for that, but if you know kind of, if you can look ahead and you can say, oh, I want second order accuracy, then you can kind of figure out which things you need to put in to get that order of accuracy. Uh, but usually if you use more points, you get a high order of accuracy. So uh, I hope that helps explain this because it's a little confusing. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try to, uh, I'll try to answer them as best I can. And if you want to see some other examples uh, using this method with uh, with higher order, you know, like fourth order derivatives or higher order accuracy, just let me know and I'll post a video of that too because I have some examples ready for that. Uh, thanks for watching.